Welcome to Sports Talk. Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Nick. I'm Mike. What's up, my sports? And today we're going to go over the 2022 Tennessee Titans salary review and offseason moves. Mike Rabel, Tennessee, man, they've been knocking on heaven's door now for quite a while. Will they finally be able to punch the ticket and get into the Super Bowl? Who the hell knows? Mm-hmm. Last year, played pretty dang good in the playoffs, just could not get there. They went 12-5 and five in the regular season, and they're getting closer and closer, I feel like, with Ken Henry. Let's hop in. This is going to be a mock offseason for the Tennessee Titans. Let's see what we got them doing this offseason. Mike, go ahead and take it away. Okay, so looking at this, we see they have negative point negative six point six million dollars in cap room. Now that's not that's not a great spot to be in. Now the players in the green, the green numbers are what you save if you release them. So if you release Amani Hooker, you would you would save two point six million, and you would take that off of that negative six point six. Now if you were to release Bud Dupree in the red, you would um, lose nine point six million in cap room. So they'd go even further into the negatives. Would you like to go, Nick? Yeah, so right now, and again, if you wanted to get rid of this guy right here who's not listed because you guys don't have someone on your depth chart right now, and then, then you don't save anything. But ladies and gentlemen, this is what you got here, okay? You got a team right now that is, again, the guys that are listed here too are the guys that are currently under contract. And I think you guys know who's missing right here in this empty spot. Okay, it's Harold Landry, who right now is due for a contract. And he has that negative $6.6 million. That does not mean that he won't be back. And you guys will have to wait and see what we do in this video to see what happens. But overall, he might say he cut people in green, you save money, you cut people in red, you lose money. Uh, and overall, I mean, this roster is not terrible. I mean, the offensive line is not horrendous. Uh, the wide receivers, you got A.J. Brown and Julio Jones. If Julio Jones and A.J. Brown stay healthy, that's a very dominant duo. Derrick Henry, absolute stud. We know about him. Uh, the defense, again, pretty dang good. But a lot of pieces are up and down, right? I mean, you got a lot of holes right now because of the fact that you, you don't have the cap space. So let's go into the next uh, slide here where we're going to be talking about the notable losses. Guys that right now need a contract. Time out. Oh, there we go. Go ahead. Okay, so some of the notable losses. But before I get into it, I'd like to thank our numbers guy. He figures out the expected salary and a percentage of snaps played. Noah, the firefighter, Paul Thompson. Without him, I don't know if we'd be able to get all this done. But now, starting with the – this is the big name right here. This is the guy they got to make sure they bring back, regardless of what they do, Harold Landry, Edge. He, he's looking for a four-year, $60 million deal, and he played 89.5% of the snaps this year for the Tennessee Titans. Now, next, we got center Ben Jones. He wants a three-year, $20 million deal, and he played 97.9% of the snaps for this team. Then we got right tackle David Questenberry, one-year, $4 million deal, and he played 99.9% of the snaps played. So these are guys that were a huge part of this team this past year. And then we got J- uh, linebacker Jay on Brown. Um, expected contract is a two-year, $9.5 million contract, and he played 38.3% of the snaps. Overall, I might say, I always say the rule of thumb here is that if you played a high percent of the snaps, those are the guys you're most likely going to bring back. Now, as Mike said, there's one guy that you really got to bring back in Harold Landry. I would also say you really should bring back Ben Jones and David Questenberry. The issue is you don't have the cap space. With negative $6.6 million, we either got to make a lot of cuts or we leave it as is and let these guys walk. Let's see what we do under the potential targets. Here we go, potential targets. You got negative $6.6 million in cap space. So this is what we got you guys doing, and I want to make sure that I make this clear in a second, that you got to do it in a certain order, okay? Number one thing is you got to make cuts, estimated cuts. Janoris Jenkins, the Jack Rabbit, $6.9 million for uh, savings if you cut him. Kendall Lamb saved $3.2 million, and Chris Williamson you saved $0.8 million. This saves you $4.4 million. You get $4.4 million an estimated cap space available. Estimated signings. Now, in this order, you have to do it like this. The very first thing this team needs to do, Mike, and, and all our viewers, you got to sign, re-sign David Questenberry to a $4 million deal, a one-year $4 million deal, which would be a $4 million cap hit. This means that your total cost would be $4 million. Now, the franchise tag deadline is March 10th. I want to repeat, it's March 10th. This means that you absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, need to get Questenberry signed immediately. 
This gives you $0.4 million to work with. You can franchise tag then and go over the cap space with a franchise tag. You cannot franchise. Well, you can franchise tag where you're negative, but you got to resign Quest and Barry before you franchise tag. So you got to resign first before you franchise tag. Because once you're negative in cap space, then you can't go and sign a player. So see, the order here is really important. You got to resign first, then franchise tag. This will, after it's all said and done, you'll be negative $17 million in estimated cap space available. Here we go, team needs. You need a wide receiver, a tight end, an offensive tackle, a defensive tackle, an edge, a linebacker, and a cornerback. Well, this is what we got you doing. We got you re-signing offensive tackle David Questenberry and re-signing edge rusher Harold Landry. With that being stated, we also got you, we also got you guys drafting a first-round wide receiver in Chris Olave, a really nice, smooth route runner, and a third-round pick in Isaiah Lightley, a tight end. That fills in two of your needs. Fourth round, fifth round, sixth round, seventh round, that's beyond their heads. We're not going to figure that out for you. But you also still need to probably attack the defensive tackle position, the linebacker position, and the cornerback position. So let's hop into what your future depth chart is going to look like. Mike, go ahead. Okay, so the future depth charts, usually there will be green if they sign anybody in free agency. This team didn't sign anybody in free agency. So then next we're going to look at the, um, the re-signings. In, the, in Harold Landry, the franchise tag, that are they're both in orange. Now, the players in yellow are the placeholders who we think should probably be replaced, but this team does not have the money to replace them. And the guys in light blue are the rookies that are drafted. We got Isaiah Likely. We got Chris Olave. I like the Chris Olave draft pick because this is a guy that can do a little bit of everything. There's two good receivers on this team already, A.J. Brown and Julio Jones. Chris Olave can run routes from the slot and from the outside, so it helps – if Julio Jones or A.J. Brown, who both have injury history, if one of them get hurt, he can go play on the outside or he can play in the slot if they're both healthy. I think Chris Olave is a nice player for this offense. Absolutely. So overall, when you look at this team, man, it's like, you know, you're losing a lot. You're losing Ben Jones, right, the starting center, which sucks. So you have to try to address that later in the, ra- later in the draft or whatnot. Uh, and we feel like, I mean, we could address that in the first round, but there's just no uh, – uh, I find it very hard to believe that there's after Linda Baum goes, there's no first round center. I'm sorry to tell everybody. So he's already off the board by the time you guys pick. You guys get Chris Olave, a guy who's going to be replacing Julio Jones in a few years anyway for you guys. Isaiah Lightley is another pretty good pick as a tight end. Again, there's not too many great centers in this year's draft, so it's going to be interesting to see what you guys do. But overall, upgrade, downgrade from last year, I'm going to be honest. Um, you guys are kind of honestly – right where you guys kind of left off from last year. Uh, you guys are losing a lot, I'm going to be honest. But you're also kind of bringing in some pretty good pieces. You're bringing back Landry. You're bringing back Questenberry. You're bringing in Olave, who's going to be another really good weapon, and likely. But you're losing a hell of a lot. Mike, honestly, what do you think about this team? Better than last year, worse than last year with these moves that they're making with the cash space that they have? Well, I look at this team, and I, I think they're going to need a linebacker. Like you got Zach Cunningham, who's who's a good linebacker, but you need another one. David Long probably is not going to cut it. Um, their defensive line is pretty good. I know they lost guys, but when you have studs on your defensive line, it makes up for guys that may not be as good, giving them better matchups. On offense, I like the Chris Olave pick, but then again, how is he going to be utilized? We see Ryan Tannehill hand the ball off to Derrick Henry 35 times a game. Is, is Chris Olave really going to be utilized in this offense? These are all things we need to take into consideration. We need Ryan Tannehill for the Texans to have a successful season and actually have a run at things. Ryan Tannehill needs to make the big time throws and he can't turn the football over. And we have not seen him do that to this point. So I think they're kind of right around the same spot as they were last year. Maybe the Colts jumped them. The Colts may have finally jumped them. If the Colts have good quarterback play, it all depends. Uh, It's coming down to the quarterbacks for both these teams. I truly do believe. I agree with you. And look, if you go back and watch our Colts video, I definitely think that you're going to be a little bit more happy with the outcome if you're a Colts fan than if you're a Titans fan. But ladies and gentlemen, again, with the cash space that we have, there's ways that you can free up this million-dollar cash space negative that you're in. You can do it by doing post-June first cuts. I don't know what your guys' is at. cap space is. We did this video. Uh, it's very tough to figure all that out for every single team. We did 32 videos. So look, it is what it is. Right now, these are the moves that we can logically make and make it be job. fair. There's okay. The possibility you can re- restructure players, but there's no way we could possibly predict that. It happens every single year after we put, replace these videos, and people are like, hey, look, my team freed up this amount of money. 
we can't predict restructures. We just can't do it. It's yeah. impossible to predict. It's way too much, and it would be way too much time consuming. It's already time consuming. This series takes hours upon hours. But ladies and gentlemen, you guys went 12 and 5 last year. I wouldn't be surprised if you got around 10, 11 wins next year. Same thing with the Colts 10, 11 wins, fighting for that number one seed in the AFC South. It's going to be a really good division again between you two. Really good football. I'm excited to see what this Colts team does. And then honestly, for Mike Vrabel's sake, man, I really do, Tennessee Titans fans, I hope that you guys truly do good. I think he deserves it. I think he's a hell of a coach. But we'll see what happens. We got NFL draft grades coming up after the draft. We got quarterback, running back, wide receiver, prospect rankings coming out soon. Watch those videos. We got mock drafts coming out. We got so much more. So be sure to stay tuned. Leave a like, subscribe, and let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. We'll see you guys soon. Peace. We are. Well, better. See you guys soon. Peace.